First Peter chapter 1, let's stand for the reading of the Word of God. <clears throat> let's uh, begin reading in verse 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation or behavior. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, hath the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation or your empty behavior received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege that we have to worship God this morning in spirit and in truth. Thank you for your divine presence. Thank you, Father, that Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose again from the dead. And we are glad this morning, Lord, that we can feel the presence of the resurrected, glorified Lord in the house of God here this morning. And I pray that Jesus would walk among us this morning. Lord, you would dispense your blessings in this congregation. Lord, you'd receive glory and honor and praise from us, from our hearts this morning. <laughs> I pray, Lord Jesus, <clears throat> you'd make us in your own image this morning. Speak to us from your word. Mold our lives this morning. Make us more aware than we've ever been of the glory and greatness of the Son of God. Lord, may we give you the praise and the honor and glory, both now and forever, Lord. We ask it all in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you this morning about redemption. Every man is a religious creature. All men worship. Religion can be found in all cultures all races, and that pervasive religion, presence of religion, throughout all cultures is a testimony of the fact that man recognizes that there is something wrong with his condition and he needs outside help to remedy it. Every religion prescribes some kind of remedy for the condition of men. They prescribe duties and rituals that men have to go through to try to alleviate the fallen condition of man. And following those directions, man will obtain, according to these religions, a measure of holiness or a measure of righteousness. But Christianity has a different remedy. Salvation and deliverance don't come by following certain rules of living or by carrying out some prescribed religious ritual, but by believing in the person and work of Jesus Christ. We do not save ourselves. He saves us. We don't earn our salvation. He provides it freely. And holiness and righteousness do not come by my determined efforts to do better, but by my trust in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Salvation is not something that I do. It's something that's been done for me. I am redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The word redeemed means to purchase back. It carries the idea of a release by payment, of a ransom. A payment is made. Liberty is gained. And restoration is accomplished by that redemption price. In the Old Testament, redemption involved three things. It involved the recovery of things lost. You remember how Boaz redeemed the possessions of Naomi. And uh, Naomi's husband had died. And Boaz redeemed the possessions of Naomi and married Ruth and raised up <coughs> seed <coughs> under Naomi. 
Secondly, redemption involved release from bondage. A slave could be released from bondage by the payment of a ransom. If a Hebrew was uh, sold into slavery because he owed money or whatever, he could be bought back from that slavery and given his freedom by some person kin to him. Then thirdly, there was a redemption price paid for the satisfaction of a judicial penalty. In Exodus 21, verses 28 through 30, a man is guilty of murder, and there is a ransom price that can be paid to free him from the penalty of death. So redemption involves the recovery of things lost, a release from bondage and the satisfaction of a judicial penalty. Redemption was made necessary by tragic loss. We were, we were those who lost something precious. Mankind lost something precious when he sinned against God. We lost our first estate. We were driven out from the Garden of Eden. And uh, angels with flaming swords prevented us from going back into that initial possession. We lost our freedom. We became servants and slaves of sin and the devil. We lost our innocence, whereas we were made innocent and made holy and made pure. We lost our innocence. We became sinners by nature and sinners by choice. Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden deprived the whole human race of its original possessions and its original grandeur. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And Paul spoke about the fallen condition of of man in Romans seven fourteen, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. We lost our possessions, driven out of the garden, lost our freedom, became servants of sin, and guilt brought the sentence of death upon us. But thank God, redemption was purchased for us. Redemption depended upon somebody able and willing to buy us back. Must be a redemption price paid. And my text tells us that we were not redeemed with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Silver and gold could not purchase us. Nobody had enough money to do it. If somebody could purchase their own soul, redeem their own soul, surely the rich man wouldn't be screaming in the flames of hell this very morning. But all of his money couldn't buy him a place in heaven. He could not redeem his own soul. Silver and gold is not sufficient to redeem man. But I'm telling you that Jesus Christ bought us with his precious blood. You know that Jesus was poor. He said the foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man hath not a place to lay his head. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 that you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be made rich. Jesus redeemed us, but not with silver and gold. He didn't have the silver and gold. But the purchase price flowed in his veins. And the purchase price was divine blood. We have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. He had the redemption price and flowing in his veins. Hallelujah. Jesus redeemed us by his precious blood. He must not only have redemption price, he must be willing to redeem us. You know that Calvary was not an afterthought with God. But my text makes clear that God or 
ordained Christ to be our sacrifice before the foundation of the world. The Bible says in verse 20, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for us. Adam's sin did not take God by surprise. God had already foreordained a sacrifice for us, the redemption price for our souls. And I want to ask you a question. Why would Jesus want to redeem us? You know, here we are, fallen human creatures, and all of us put together equals nothing, zero. We were nothing, brother. Sin had made us all putrefying, uh, a stench in the nostrils of God. But the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4, God who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and have raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We weren't worth anything. You know, I don't know why God would want to buy us except for the fact that He loved us and was rich in mercy toward us. As far as we're being worth worth anything to God. We were worthless, and, but He bought us anyway. Praise God. You know, God taught Hosea a very valuable lesson. Told him who to marry. He went and married Gomer. Gomer's an unfaithful wife to him. And Hosea learns firsthand the pain of God's heart when His people are unfaithful to Him. His wife walked away from him, gave herself uh, to other men, finally wound up in a slave market. And God spoke to Hosea and said to him, Hosea, I want you to go love that woman and buy her. And Hosea went to the slave market and he bought that woman who had been unfaithful to him, who had thrown herself away, on many lovers, and Hosea went to the market and did as God commanded him and bought that woman out of the slave market, took her home with him, and loved her as his wife. And God told Hosea to do that, to teach him about God's relationship with his people. I'm telling you, brother, we were like Hosea's wife, squandered our lives, thrown away our lives, and God loved us, and God sent His Son to buy us for Himself. Romans chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners and Christ died for us. And brother, everybody in heaven, everybody in heaven right now is somebody that God found in the trash pile of humanity and bought them and changed their life and redeemed them. Praise God for redemption. You have not been redeemed with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that redemption has benefits both now and later. Redemption produces righteousness and holiness in our lives now. God buys us unto Himself. The Bible says in the text I read to you this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? These bodies that were once so full of corruption and so full of sin, but through the precious blood of Jesus, God cleanses us of that corruption and sin and makes us a temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So that God dwells in us and lives in us and walks in us. And this body that was once a temple of idols and, and so full of petrification and corruption and sin, and God makes it an abiding place for Himself. Your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye have been bought with a price, and therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord. Brother, I'm so glad for this redemption plan that God made before the foundation of the world. Praise God. To buy us out of the slave market of sin and to release us from the slavery of sin. Hallelujah. Brother Danny, I won't never forget the, the lesson you taught here in Galatians chapter 4 where the Lord, uh, you taught us about how God released us from our slavery and set us free. But He didn't just set us free and He adopted us into His family and made us His sons and daughters and put us in His will. Hallelujah. And now we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And it ought to be enough to thrill anybody that knows anything about redemption, where God brought us from and what He's made out of us. And I'm telling you, brother, it's the precious blood of Jesus that did that. Jesus died on that cross, spoke six short sayings, or seven short sayings in six hours. One of the things that Jesus said on that cross, as He's dying, just before He commends His Spirit to God, He cries loud, It is finished. Praise God. I understand that that is one word in the original languages. And that word was stamped on the business transactions to indicate that payment had been made in full. Hallelujah. And when Jesus cried on that cross, it is finished. He was saying payment has been made in full. And you have been bought back out of the slave market of sin and made God's alone. Hallelujah. So we are His by the purchase price of the blood of Jesus Christ. It is finished. And since it is finished and Jesus has paid the redemption price, then the, the reign of sin is finished in you. The devil's possession of you is finished. You don't belong to Him anymore, and you've been released from the power of sin. Praise God. You don't have to serve sin any longer. You've been set free by the blood of Jesus. You've been redeemed out of that slave market of sin. You are a free man this morning because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, my. You remember Peter preaching... <coughs> When he'd, he, they'd heal that lame man at the beautiful gate, and they are, the crowd comes around because of the this man w goes with them in the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Everybody knows this man, acquainted with him. He's been there. He's been. He's forty years of age. He's never walked. No telling how long he sat at that gate, you know, begging. And now then, he's in that temple walking and leaping and praising God, people come around, you know, want to know about this. Uh, they, they look on Peter and John as though by their power, by their holiness, this man's been made whole. Peter points away from himself to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, it's by His name, by faith in His name, this man has been made whole. And he said, God raised him from the dead. You crucified him. But God raised him from the dead and sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. I'm telling you, Jesus came not just to forgive you of your sins, but to make a change on the inside of you and turn you away from your iniquities. He causes us to love righteousness and hate sin. We begin to detest the things and that we once did outside of Christ. And now then we love the things we once hated and hate the things we once loved because Jesus has redeemed us and blessed us and turned us away from our iniquities. That is the redemption of Christ. <clears throat> then secondly, that redemption has a future benefit. 
He's preparing a place for us. You know, in the book of Revelation, we have a glimpse into heaven in Revelation 4 and 5. In fact, the scenes in the book of Revelation change from earth to heaven and back to earth and back to heaven. But in Revelation chapter 4 and 5, we have a glimpse into heaven. We see the four beasts, the four living creatures around the throne, crying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And then we see the four and twenty elders, representatives of the saints of God, brighthood saints of God around the throne of God. And they're singing a song in Revelation chapter 5. Thou art worthy to take the book and to loose the seals thereof. For thou hast redeemed us by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. You hear what they're singing about in heaven? They're singing about redemption. This is occupying their minds. You remember that book that had that seven seals and, and nobody was found worthy to open that book in heaven or earth or under the earth. And John is weeping about it because nobody is worthy to open that book. I don't know. It, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not positive about what that book is. There's different ideas about it. But I believe that is the, the title deed to this earth. Satan has been a usurper on this earth. For all of these years since he overthrew man in the garden. And this book is the title deed to the book. And no, to this earth. And nobody is found worthy to open the seals of that book. And John is weeping about it. The consequences are too great. And he's weeping about it because nobody can be found worthy to open the seals of that book. And, but finally one of the elders says to him, John, weep not. For the lion of the tribe of Judah has been found worthy to open the book. And John wipes the tears out of his eyes and looks up and sees a lamb, a lamb as it had been slain. And the reason that Jesus is qualified to open the book is because he paid the price, brother. It was his blood, redeeming blood. He paid the price for it. He's worthy to open the book. And the saints of God are singing redemption song in heaven. They see the Lamb as he has been slain. They sing God worthy to open the book. For thou was slain and by thy blood thou hast redeemed us out of every kindred tongue, people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Because Jesus is going to take it back. Praise God, he's going to take it back. He paid the price. He's going to take it back. And that's what you're reading about in the book of Revelation, brother. Jesus is taking it back and giving it back to the rightful owners. And he's going to rule and reign. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you what, brother, my soul is thrilled with Jesus this morning. I'm so glad because Jesus loved us in spite of our sins and paid the price for me. I'm glad that He redeemed us from the vain traditions of our fathers. Praise God. My family, brother, when I did a little genealogy research in my family, there's plenty of people in my family that wouldn't even give me information because of the sordid kind of lives that have been lived by my ancestors. How about yours? You ain't going to have to look very far probably in your family to you find some horse thieves. And, and brother, my, my dad's family, God had mercy on my daddy. I mean, he saved him. He was a drunk and ran gambling joints in Montgomery and Fatal. And uh, he lived a sorry, low-down life. But thank God, God got a hold of his heart and convinced him he didn't have to live that way, that Jesus had paid a price. 
to release us from that lifestyle and give us a brand new life. Jesus brought my daddy to an old-fashioned altar in a little holiness church in Prattville, Alabama, and God saved my daddy. Saved him so good, he went back out of that church and, and uh, went to the liquor store where he bought his liquor and charged it and went to the man and said, Sir, I've come to pay you what I owe you, and I'm not coming back. God has saved my soul. Hallelujah. The man had tears in his eyes, stuck his hand over the counter, and said, Houston, I'm glad you got saved. My daddy paid him and never went back. I'm telling you, brother, God saved us from the empty traditions, vain traditions of our fathers, and gave us a brand new way to live. Hallelujah. Because of the redemption price that Jesus paid for our souls. Hallelujah. I hate to think where I'd be this morning and where you'd be this morning if it hadn't been for that redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. If the devil had kept us in bondage and kept us going the direction our families were going under the influence of the devil, where would we be this morning? I'm telling you, brother, we got a reason to shout. we got a reason to rejoice. We've been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. My, what a Savior. I say, what a Savior, what a Savior, what a Savior. Praise the Lamb of God. Hey, 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 thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory to God. Oh, He's worthy to be praised. I tell you what, if there's a soul in this place and you're still in bondage, in bondage to the world and in bondage to sin, and you can't get loose, and you want to do better, and you try to do better, but you can't do better. I'm telling you, brother, there is a price that's been paid for you. You don't have to live that kind of life. You can be set free this morning. <laughs> oh, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that blood lose all their guilty stains. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. The song says, that song says that this is going to be our theme, and it'll be our theme as long as we live, and that Jesus died for us, and His blood bought us, and hallelujah, He released us from our sins and slavery, and made us a child of God. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Woo, Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Read about this slave being auctioned off. A young lady being auctioned off from the slave market. And uh, there's a gentleman uh, 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 bidding on her. And a roughneck over here bidding on her. And she's proud and defiant, hating every one of them that's bidding on her. And the bidding keeps going up, and the gentleman keeps bidding, and the, and the rough guy over here keeps bidding. Finally, the gentleman bids the last bid. The auctioneer says, all right, go and go and go on to the gentleman here. She is bitter and angry. And this man goes up to her, and while he's going up to her, he's tearing the papers up. And she says, what are you doing? He said, I bought you to turn you loose, to make you free. She, she, she at first had hated that man, but now then, her attitude completely changed when she understood that that man had bought her to turn her loose. Praise God. I'm telling you, brother, the world needs to change their mind about Jesus. Because Jesus paid a price for them, not to hurt them, not to harm them, but to turn them loose. And Jesus is wonderful, and the world needs to change their mind about Jesus. Oh, I love Him. I tell you, I love Him. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I got tired of being a slave. How about you? 
And that's the reason I got saved. I got tired of being a slave. I got weary of being a slave. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. I made my way to an old-fashioned altar to get loose from that. I was tired of being a slave. And Jesus met me in an old-fashioned altar of repentance. And, and by the redeeming blood of Jesus, He set me free that day. I never got over that. I'm still happy about that this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I tell you what, brother, if you don't ever get over that day, and you don't ever get over that hour, you'll never backslide on God. When you're thanking God, He sets you free. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like we ought to just stand to our feet and give God glory. Give God honor this morning. Hallelujah. If there's a soul in this place that you're still in bondage, you still have need of being delivered and set free, and these altars are open for you this morning. Jesus will set you free this morning. You don't have to continue to be a slave. You don't have to continue to be in servitude to the devil. The blood of Jesus will set you free this morning. <laughs> 